Hello, and welcome to Covert Castaway. I'm Holly. Je suis Stéphane. Join us as we share what we learn and how we're making the transition to live aboard cruising. Welcome to season five of Covert Castaway. We are really excited to catch everybody up on what we've been doing, but um, the nomad lifestyle is uh, been a little... Glamorous. Yeah, it's glamorous (laughs) and been a little hectic. So um, yeah, why don't we talk about where we are right now? Uh, we're in Montpellier, downtown Montpellier, really downtown, uh, by the Place de la Comédie. In France? In France, yeah. <laughs> South of France. <laughs> and clarify. Uh, and um, yeah, that's exciting. We're going to spend two months in that location, that apartment. And it's a very different lifestyle from living in Tahoe. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're like totally isolated. Yeah. Here we are like in the heart right downtown. of everything. Yeah. And the spring is here, so the nice weather, people are out and it's buzzing. It's buzzing. So you might be hearing music in the backgrounds or random motorcycles. Uh, it's it's a noisy area here, so, you mm. know, if, if we're waiting for a perfect quiet moment to record, it's just not going to happen. So mm. we just decided to go for it. Good noisy. Yeah, it's, it's kind of fun. It's you fuzzy like and busy. Yeah, for sure. So we wanted to kind of share with everybody what we've been doing over the last month and a half or so. Um, we've been basically living out of suitcases, which is um, it's it's different than living on a boat, but it's the same in a lot of ways because you just don't have that much stuff. <laughs> so that's been good practice. Yeah. yeah, and we probably need to get better. <laughs> yeah, we have we have too many bags. Um, so yeah, don't let, do sporting activities. It yeah, takes a lot of space. We'll we'll get to that. So let's catch everybody up. So last time um, we kind of left uh, left off on se- season four, we kind of caught everybody up on what was going on with the boat, and you were getting ready to go to Turkey mm-hmm. to hand the boat over. So yeah, and so that was a short trip. And and the good thing is uh, our flights, our trip, uh, we did it together with uh, Carolyn and the new owner. So at least we minimize the, the risk of not getting there at the same time. But there was a flight from San Francisco to Istanbul, Istanbul to Antalya, then a long taxi mm-hmm. ride. And then after that, the next, we arrived like, middle of the night or early in the morning, yeah, two o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. And then the next day, the boat was being put in the water. Yeah, he put so, it in the water and handed it over right, you know, really yeah. quickly. So that was just like no time for any issues along the exactly. way. Exactly. And everything worked out perfectly. And um, so handed the keys. I know. It's Say crazy. one last goodbye to Owen. So crazy. And, and the boat sold quickly i mean it takes the right buyer obviously yeah um and we're really excited for them and i think they're really excited for the boat and the boat's going to make it over the pacific before we will (laughs) it seems like um which i think we covered in the in the final episode um Mm -hmm. it's headed to australia so that happened pretty quick and then you came back and we were you know getting ready to repack the house um deal with our plumbing issue um, yeah, solve that and uh, that leak we had in somewhere on the hill in front of the house. We were able to identify that, getting resolved mm-hmm. with uh, some excavation services and helium pumps and different things to kind of find yeah. the leak. But yeah, that was that was a little stressful getting that. It was like out. a treasure hunt, except there was no treasure. Yeah, <laughs> and it cost a lot of money. It was yeah. like super expensive, <laughs> along with the surprise tax bill that we got. Although there was a wedding ring that was discovered in oh, the yeah, yard, we but we couldn't ad- that's not yours yeah it wasn't mine <laughs> and we could identify yeah. to who it belongs so we gave it to the worker who, who found, found it, it. And yeah good for him <laughs> yeah for being honest yeah so we um we also i was able to update my passport which i think i talked about and and i se- secured a long stay visa which is why we're here mm-hmm. um excited to be able to spend some ex- extended time in in France and in Europe, and it's going to be an exciting summer. So even though we don't have a boat anymore, yeah. um, we're sort of, you know, trying to live the cruising lifestyle just without a boat. <laughs> so it's sort of a combination of Airbnbs and and um, your family. 
Yeah, well, and we have, I mean, different goals. Yeah. Yeah, this summer. And um, so we're going to have a, you know, busy summer, just yeah. busy on land. Yeah. And we'll do some sailing, we'll do some different activities. Mm -hmm. And um, so it'll but be there a was, different experience. Yeah, for sure. And it was definitely, you know, time well spent. Um, you know, while we were packing up, we also, I think we mentioned last time, we had a lot of paperwork to catch up on. Um, and I'm still working um, a little bit. So there was, you know, business work and, and things to take care of there. And, but got that pretty much wrapped up um, so that we could go and, and kind of start the, the, season um and so we left for guadalupe yeah i think there was a hmm, i guess it was already our third time leaving town yeah so i guess it was a little easier now after a third time yeah it's weird you get all your stuff out and you're like oh okay this is our home and then it's like no it's not put it all away yeah because we arrived Cause we rented out we arrived in tao like mid end of december, december. Before and Christmas. then we left early March, and in between we spent a lot of time also outside. Right, we Tarot. were doing other stuff. So that went pretty quick, and then suddenly we had to repack pack our personal stuff. It was really strange because yeah. we were renting our house as a, a vacation Airbnb, rental, yeah. and then uh, yeah, pack our stuff and then get on a flight. We went, yeah. So we're getting pretty good at like taking our stuff out. Oh, we're home. Oh no, we're not here. Put it all away. Yeah, yeah. So that was that was interesting. Um, so off we went. So we we went to Guadalupe, and that whole Guadalupe trip was planned just to not be in the snow so much. Um, before we decided to sell the boat, before we decided to get another boat, you know, and all of the stuff. So it was booked. And I'll say, as well, we were kind of working up to the date, we were second guessing our decision to do that because for a little while in Tahoe, I was like, wow, this isn't enough time in the States and maybe we should stay longer. But, you know, off we went. Yeah. We've and been did busy. It. Yeah. Between all the activities, visiting people and, mm -hmm. and then it's just like, it went the holidays really fast. Yeah. And then we were like, oh wow. And we haven't done much skiing or so snowboarding. So it was kind of, uh, well, there was no, there was no snow. For a well, while, a long time, yeah. It and snowed a lot in December, Christmas, so yeah. that was like a layer. But um, but also we had planned to well for me to learn to kiteboard, right. and we had planned you know to do some practicing on a hobby cat, and yeah, we had planned for you to practice your French. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So Guadeloupe was a good destination for that, and um, we spent four weeks there mm -hmm. uh, in the Saint Anne area, and. Um, it was it was really amazing. There were there were some people nearby. Ryan Sailing was nearby. We we tried to connect with them and but we missed each other. And then um Ryan, Ryan and Sophie. No, and then Ryan and Sophie were on um the island just north of that. Mm. And um, you know, it's like so close but so far when because we didn't have a car either. Mm. And there there were some other um people that reached out and we just we had no way to get to people. So mm. Um, yeah, but it was a nice area and then, and then, you know, your daughter Seglin came and, and we had a lot of fun touring around mm -hmm. and visiting stuff. It's a beautiful island. Um, very rustic. Um, I think I was the only American on that yeah. entire island. <laughs> Man, that was weird. A lot of French. It was a lot of French. Yeah. There Which was, is great for me, you know, full immersion and everything. I think we met one Italian couple. Mm -hmm. I heard some people from Quebec. But man, that's like ninety five percent. It was way French more than tourism. that. I would say ninety nine percent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but is, it was great. It was so it, weird. It was definitely good. Um, yeah. yeah. So talk a little bit about your kiteboarding. You you took lessons and um, yeah. So that was the goal was to learn to be able to kiteboard on my own, be able to go upwind, and so that was accomplished. Um, that was fun because the water is is warm. <laughs> so, very warm yeah. so i'm wondering like how is that going to work here because it's, it's cold be here a bit right. different well in the summer it'll probably be mm -hmm. warm enough uh but uh definitely as you learn you spend more time in the water so mm -hmm. it was good to be in warm water but it was like um also very windy and mm -hmm. and uh so it's a you know it's like a big kite <laughs> yeah up, or high up in the air so there's a little bit of apprehension but once you get over all that and, mm -hmm. and uh, I must say, like, you start getting the feel of, like, 
you know, the, the speed and, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, it's very different from, from sailing because you're combining like the mm -hmm. trimming the kite, but also dealing with the, the board mm -hmm. and then, um, kind of combining this together and it takes a bit of time to, to get the muscle memory and, but to you're relax. autonomous now you can kind yeah. of go on your own. So, yeah. yeah. So the next step now is the plan is to buy some equipment here and uh, to practice uh, in the med and and then uh, when we get the boat and yeah. load that equipment so so that was exciting so then the other thing is Stefan goes well this is really going to be great for you we can rent the hobie cat and we can take it out and you can learn you know better like sailing tactics cuz i mean on our boat it, it it just wasn't like i was learning a lot about maneuvering the boat and you know docking the boat and anchoring the boat you know, because I was on the helm this past season. But, and I've taken sailing courses, I've been certified and all that uh, on a monohull. But, you know, when you're out there sailing and the way we were sailing in the med, it's it, it's hard to learn because of just the way we were sailing um, yeah, in general. Yeah, I mean, you have to make a point to, I think, what I, you know, and maybe people are better at it, but I think uh, once you have a destination to go from point A to point B and dealing with the weather, the waves, and, you know, whatever, all the weather, um, it, it's just hard to say, okay, we're going to practice. Right. You know, There's no like, practice time, I guess, is the yeah, point. And, yeah. and even if you do practice, you'll do like, you know, maybe like couple a couple tags things, or a yeah. couple jibes. Versus when you're in a lagoon, <laughs> where we're in, go in uh, oh, Guadalupe, the lagoon, yeah. it's like close quarter sailing with a fast boat. With boats well, hang on. So we haven't even said what we did. So we rented a Hobie Cat yeah. and we bought a package um, to get on the Hobie Cat together mm. and, um, you know, learn that way. And the boat was super fast, like yeah. so fast. The <laughs> second a puff of wind came, it was like, whoop, I'm like, what is going on? And, um, yeah, I mean, and it was a, where St. Anne is, there's also a sailing school, a kite boarding school, a Anchorage. Uh, Anchorage. There's boats anchored. There's people swimming. Mm. There's, um, Jet skis. A reef. There's a reef, you know. <laughs> and so And it's windy. And it's really windy. And, and there are waves. Yeah. And there's a reef. Yeah. So there I mean, that was definitely a very interesting way to kind of sharpen my skills and learn it, on a Hobie cat, it was a Hobie sixteen, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we flipped it. Yeah. And that was also interesting. I mean, because, I mean, people flip them, so that's kind of part of the whole adventure of doing it and, and learning more. But um it wasn't a good situation. We were close to the um, other boats that were anchored. Other uh, boats out of yeah, sight, out of sight from the person who was supposed to come out and help us if we flipped it. Mm -hmm. um, trying to have us, you know, get on and flipped it. We had like completely, you know, rubbed ourselves down with um, sunscreen, so everything was slippery. Like trying to get back on it <laughs> and trying to pull it down. Um, with both of us on it. Yeah. So that was an well, interesting you're drifting experience. And so stuff, we're drifting yeah. and yeah. Some excitement. So that was definitely exciting. Um, but so then the next couple times we went on it, it was like the main goal was to not flip it again because it was so much work <laughs> to get it back up. But I will say like, it's so good because yeah, you know, small boats teach you, give you a lot of feedback mm -hmm. and and then when you're sailing in close quarters, like uh, in, you know, like a, a small lagoon with, you know, then you really have to not only have your head inside the boat, mm -hmm. but you have your head outside the boat yeah. to really like think, okay, here, am I tacking or, you know, am I falling off or, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, you know, which, you know, there's the reef and then, you know, probably we don't know how far the reef is and stuff like, so if you're familiar with the area, you can probably yeah. push it, but like, we're like, okay, let's start We're trying now. to be conservative. You know. Yeah. So that was, that was fun, but definitely worthwhile. You know, I, I think it, it's the boat we were, the boat we had, the Sona, um, didn't give a lot of feedback. Oh, no. And, you know, so it's hard to kind of get the whole, like, translate a lot of the theory that I learned into actual practice and sensing the boat. Yeah. Um, so I think that's going to continue even from here this summer, um, you know, through the yacht club they rent. For they sure, rent because everything you learn through these, I mean, translates 
to a into bigger a, boat into a performance yeah. boat and and then it makes you a better sailor yeah you know? and, yeah and especially yeah so so we're going to continue to do some hobby cat sailing this yeah. summer the other couple high points in in guadalupe um I, the high point for me was the diving. Mm-hmm. We decided to dive at the Jacques Cousteau Reserve, which was just gorgeous. I mean, and and people say like some of the best diving is in Guadeloupe, and I'm sure there's other areas nearby. Oh but, yeah, I'm sure. But I mean this this nature reserve. I mean the coral was pristine. It was it was huge. They had these huge um, towers or chimneys. They looked like. Mm-hmm. Uh, of of coral and fish, we saw a huge turtle that was just like munching out, you know, mm. and just sitting there, yeah. eyeballing us a little bit, but going about its business. I mean, that was really really awesome. Yeah, and it was the the price was very reasonable. It was for, like forty five euros or something for a dive or for both dives. No, for, I forget now. Like, it was not expensive at all. I and mean, that included whole, all equipment. renting all the equipment yeah. and everything. Places, I thought that was pretty reasonable. Other places, like remember you pay for all the equipment lot. yeah, and then you pay for the uh, going out. It seemed like it. And, and it was great because it was close to shore. So you just, yeah, like room. they had this little hut and, and you literally just put on all your stuff. You walk across the street, yeah. you get in the water, they take you, you, you get, um, into this little boat and they, it's like five minutes or something. They yeah. take you over to the reserve. Yeah. And it was beautiful, absolutely mm-hmm. gorgeous. And I was just blown away, um, how amazing the diving was. I, and we've never done diving that beautiful before. I don't think, I mean, mm-hmm. no, in the dives. Hawaii, I mean, Hawaii is was, charm. Yes, yeah. you forget. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, but I was just I was just blown away about all the fish, you know, the condition of the coral and the sea life and everything. Yeah, so that was that was amazing. And then when um Segalin came, we took a trip to Guacaco, mm-hmm. which is a chocolate what do they call it? Bean to bar mm-hmm. local um you know, chocolate chocolatier. What do you call it in French? Um, choc- yeah, I don't know. It's cacao in French. Like basically, it's yeah. a plantation with uh, I don't know. But they English. make ch- they make chocolate basically. Yeah, cocoa. Yeah, like yeah. trees. Trees. <laughs> yeah, and so um, they taught us how to make chocolate. That was also a really cool high point. And I've decided after boat, that's the business we're going to go into. <laughs> Super fun mm-hmm. um, to make chocolate and um, learned a ton about that. Chocolate, and, coffee. Yeah, and hot chocolate that you actually don't put milk in. It's just straight up chocolate. So yeah. that was cool. And um, yeah, that was definitely highly recommended because mm-hmm. it was hands on. Um, the guy was like. And it wasn't awesome. touristy. No. You know, it wasn't like a, a side of the road tourist trap. It was way up in the jungle. Yeah. And, um, you know, really kind of f- family style, I guess I would say. Yeah. Yeah. And between like doing the chocolate and then you leave with your own chocolate bars. Yeah. That was and, cool. and then touring the plantation mm-hmm. and not only seeing the cocoa, like trees, mm-hmm. whatever they are called in English, but everything else that grows in Their the jungle. Avocados and mangoes and they had all kinds of stuff going on over there. Yeah. Yeah, we did a little video, just a you know one or two minute um, uh, video on our our st- our trip there on Instagram. Um, if you want to check it out, but the, it was super cool. I would definitely recommend that. Yeah, and then we we stayed in Saint Anne, um, which is kind of on the on the um, on the west side, southwest kind of side, a little bit of the uh, Guadeloupe. And it's great because it's a windy area, so for kiteboarding and for um, hobby cat sailing, and you know it's great. I think it's more southeast, right? Sorry, southeast, yeah. Yeah. southeast. Um, and then Bastair is kind of on the on Other the west side, side and yeah. a whole different vegetation. Yeah, it's very different. Um, yeah, if we were to spend more time, if we were to go back, we'll probably uh, go on the other side. Uh, go on the other side to mm. discover that area because the the trips we took over there were like kind of a lot of fun mm-hmm. to discover. And then we took a boat ride to a little island uh, called Les Saints. Les Saints. Les Saints. 
And um, we, we got on the boat really late because we were always late for stuff. No, we're not. <laughs> and so we got we got like some actually pretty stellar seats uh, up in up in the See, front. It pays off. I know. It did pay on off. Time. Yeah. But not. But early. everybody got soaking wet uh, from, and it was it was pretty bumpy. Yeah, because I mean, local people had recommended that we catch the boat ride really uh, from Les Trois Rivières, if I remember. So it's by the south point of the Bastère, and so it's the shortest boat ride. Mm -hmm. And that was really good advice because with the waves and the angle of the waves and the wind, I mean, it was just spraying the whole boat. So Soaking wet. It, we, we got super lucky. Where, where we, we were seated. Like we, we, I mean, and it was like a free... Uh, show because we we would not get any drop and we could see the people in front of us and all the way Just to the back wet. being drenched yeah and that and was a couple, like couple, funny a couple people were turning green too i mean it was a bit much but yeah. we went over there and um rented a golf cart and kind of cruised around and saw different parts um of, of the island there so that was really nice Anything else you want to mention about? Yeah, on Bastère, we went to a small town called Bouillant. And mm -hmm. there is this, uh, uh, how do you call this? I forget now. The, the hot water coming from... Oh, the, the springs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so there's... Uh, there's yeah, that a was cool. Firm, like factory, whatever, not factory, but I uh, cannot find the word right now, that produces energy from the hot water coming from the ground. And they release the hot water at, at the sea. So you can swim... In, but it's naturally produced from, yeah, yeah, naturally. from the volcano, yeah. yeah. So it's like but it's just kind of funny that the name of the town is like bouillon, like yeah. soup. No, and no, then, not bouillon. No, bouillon. but that's what it reminds me of. Yeah, but bouillon means really, really hot in French. Mm -hmm. So, and it was fun to swim in that water, mm -hmm. and there was like a strong current. So you mm -hmm. just go for a ride, and you feel the hot water, and sometimes cold. And so mm -hmm. that was a, a fun thing to and do. And the, the waterfalls were really pretty. The waterfall, mm -hmm. yeah, in the, in mm -hmm. the jungle area. And so yeah, there was plenty of stuff to to do and discover uh, around Guadeloupe. So that was uh, that was fun. So um, after Seglin left, we you know did a, a couple more things and then um we nursed you had a back thing i got sick you know and so there were some things going on health wise but then we packed up our bags and we headed to paris where it was brilliant and beautiful the week before it was what was it like 70 degrees or something like that unusually warm it for was paris. like summer type weather yeah and we show up and it literally it was it was like hailing and snowing mm. <laughs> when we were there and the plan there it was um, my sister and my niece flew out from san francisco and we're going to meet us and um and yeah so that's what happened you were supposed to come down to do some courses that got canceled last minute um, down because here because of the weather because the of the wind. weather here, mm -hmm. and and the south of France, and so you you got to stay with us, and we did kind of Paris in three days um, with my sister and my niece, mm -hmm. so that was fun. So we hit all the high points: the Arc de Triomphe, the Eiffel Tower. We went to the Louvre, um, Montmartre. Montmartre. Yeah, so we did that, and that was a whirlwind tour with without a lot of sleep, mm -hmm. <laughs> and so. Then we headed to Brittany to see your parents. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so that was fun to uh, to catch up. And also we had left some bags over there. Yeah, so we introduced ourselves to the stuff that we kind of stowed away at their house. Yeah, before uh, yeah, getting back to the U.S. last year. So we, um, we repacked and, and we kind of added more to our luggage. Um, yeah, yeah, but basically everything we own is in two large duffel bags, two um, carry-on roller bag suitcases, and two backpacks. That's basically it. That's what we have. So it's a lot definitely, you know, to be traveling with, but considering that's, that's kind of everything we own right now that we'll put on the new boat at some point in time, yeah. it's not a well, lot. We have a couple more things in my parents' house, like diving equipment. Oh, yeah, the wetsuits. And life stuff. jackets. Life wet jackets. Wetsuits. Yeah. But we have also some sporting equipment that we took, like life jacket, kiteboarding, kite, uh, yeah. uh, kite and, 
you're going to so, get a board. Yeah. So, yeah, so it's going to all that up. stuff like quickly takes so We have space. a storage problem <laughs> right now. Yeah. We, I mean, at least we're able to move. Mm -hmm. But when we're going to move from place to place, uh, yeah, that's not going to be uh, so much fun as we keep buying more stuff. But the goal is to... Uh, uh, to use that experience to keep downsizing and and <laughs> trimming our luggage, so when we are ready to move onto the onto the new boat, then we we are as light as we can. Yeah. So this is what's been interesting. It's been kind of, you know, I just described us going to a bunch of places and kind of living out of suitcases and Paris and Brittany and even before that, before we left um, the California. You know, from Tahoe, we spent a few days in my sister's house. Um, you know, we had spent a couple weeks in Napa before that. So I just feel like we've been shuffling around on, in suitcases for quite some time. So yeah. I'm excited to settle down a little bit, even if it's just for we're going to be here, what, two months, yeah. basically. And um, in this apartment. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we're heading to, um, you know, yeah. uh, different parts of Europe. You know, and then coming back and and um, taking the courses and stuff in in La Grand Mott. So we're looking forward to that. Yeah. Well, the other thing we we did that's going to help us. So it it's great when you realize you have family in San Francisco because we fly out of San Francisco or we had to do stuff for your passport and visa. visa yeah. So we have like a place little to stay. headquarters. Yeah. With my parents being here, it's also like been um, advantageous because, well, we have another place to stay, but also we're able to get a French SIM card mm -hmm. at a really, really low price mm -hmm. because we're added onto the family uh, plan. Yeah. So that's cool. So we secured that while we were there. Because there was like no Wi-Fi in Guadeloupe. It was really bad. Yeah. So we were trying to watch Formula One. We were like trying to, well, there was none. I was trying to have Zoom calls. It was just Well, bad. it was working, but Barely. Sometimes it was not. Yeah. <laughs> and then so not, not super reliable. Mm -hmm. And so so at least like now we have a French SIM card. Uh, for, I mean, really good um, uh, price. And then we also um, got, I was able to get a French credit card. Um, again, through my parents' account and stuff. So that's going to help us because like realize while we're in Guadeloupe, it's suddenly like um, for two things like because we had American credit cards, you know, somehow like some fun well, we can French still, website was not working. Yeah, there's random stuff. It's not like, you know, you can't get by, but it, it, it'll be helping these like random occasions when you need. Yeah. There was some deposit or something you needed to put down for the kiteboarding insurance or I don't know what it was, but hmm. it's that kind of stuff. Yeah. And it's just random. So, um, yeah, so that's where we're at. Like I said, um, this town is just really cute. It's not a town people talk about, actually, um, Montpellier. Yeah. It's, it's like, uh, but when we looked it up, it was in the top 10 biggest cities. In yeah, I think in France, it's France. like number seven or eight right. biggest cities. But um, it's... It's really cute. It's, it's sure. not, you know, I mean, you have... I think, well, you have Paris for sure. I think you have Marseille, Lyon, and those are really, really big cities. Mm -hmm. But after that, it drops quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't feel like big. But how many people did you say when you looked at that? I think the downtown Montpellier, kind of like the heart of, you know, the the, the city is like 200 and... 250 forget, or something. Yeah, 1,000 thousand. people. Yeah. But there's uh, a lot going on. It's lively. The surroundings. Yeah. That's, probably, that's that's like I think it's half yeah. a million. Mm -hmm. But everywhere we've been, it just like it's really beautiful. I mean, the streets and the bars and the restaurants. I mean, it's just there are pockets everywhere. Yeah, it's there's just like, it, and that's what I like about it, and why we kind of wanted to stay downtown is if we're going to be set for a while, mm -hmm. you know, we can there's stuff to discover, and then you can discover new stuff. It's not like it's the same area yeah. all the time. And hopefully, like yeah. meet. Meet, meet people. local people, yeah. and uh, there's a lot also of international people, mm -hmm. um, apparently. So yeah. we've got to meet yeah. them. We've got to meet them. Got so we've only French been here a couple so days. Yeah, <laughs> your for sure. Yeah, so um, that's where we're at. That's what's been going on, and uh, we just wanted to kind of update you on the nomad life and and what's happening as we as we start our new season, and we'll have much more to report on in in the boat department. Um, in coming episodes. So we hope that you uh, stay with us. And 
If you do have any questions or topics you want us to cover as we sort of gear up to start going through the boat building buying process once again, Mm -hmm. um, please send those our way at sailingowen at gmail.com. Fair winds for now. Boom, boom. Thank you for listening. If you like this podcast, please subscribe, like, or share with another covert castaway. Fair winds for now. Thank <laughs> you.